We're still in Hosea, mm-hmm. chapter three. We're on three three. Va. Oh, so remember, he just bought her back, right? He paid the money. Right. He bought her back. He says, "Va Omer Eleha." Who is saying? Who's it conjugated for? I. Right. You don't. You don't get two olives. Hosea. He said, "I'm going to buy her back for this money, and I will say to her, Yamim Rabim, many days Teshvi Li, you will stay with me, you will dwell with me, Velo Tizni, don't harlot around, Velo Tihi Laish, and don't be to a man. In other words, don't go with anybody else. Vagam Ani Elayich." To you, on you, for you, something. It's conjugated for the second person feminine, elayich, to you. And I will do the same to you, even though there's no verb. Ki, why? Yamim rabim, it's the same. Yamim rabim. Many mm-hmm. days. Yeshavu, well, they, they will dwell. Sons of Israel, ain melech. They haven't a king. Ain sar, no prince. Ain zevach, no sacrifice. In matseva, standing pillar, good. Uh, in ephod, and ephod is an ephod. <laughs> and trafim are, it's a teraphim. That's right, the idols, the household idols. The verb yeshvu, yeshvu, what tense is that? It is the future. <laughs> Thank you. And it's not with a vav convert. So he's talking about the future, something future is going to happen. And they're going to be without anything, with no guidance whatsoever, no king. They're not going to do any of the things they're required to do by Torah, and they won't have any idols either. They're just going to be out there. Verse 5, Achar Yashuvu. So look at the difference between the two lines up at the end. You have a Yeshvu, and this is a Yashuvu. They're two different verbs. What is the Yashuvu? They will return. After they return, the Bnei Yisrael. And Vikshu. What is Vikshu? What is Bavakasha? Please, okay, they're doing it by request. They're gonna, they're, they're gonna search for, but they're gonna request. What are they requesting? Yahweh Elohehem, their God, and also yeah. David, their king, right? Melech, Malkam, their king. Ufachadu, fear. With a literal meaning of tremble. Devarim, Kafchet, Pasuk, Shishim, Veshesh, Vehayu. And they will be. Why is it they will be? Because it's chayecha. What is chayecha? You are a life. But life is always plural. It's chayim. It's always plural. So, and it will be, and your life will be talui. What's talui? Hanging. Licha to you, mineged. So mineged is actually a... It's a preposition. We don't ever end a phrase in a preposition. We're not supposed to. But the idea is that your life is hanging before you, mm-hmm. and it's in doubt. Okay? But we're in the section of the, of the curses, right? Ufacharita, <laughs> and you will be afraid, Laila, by Yomam, in the day, Velo Ta'amin. Remember Ta'amin? You will not have assurance. You will not believe Bechayecha. In other words, you can't believe that your life will even continue. You can't put any faith in that fact. All right? You will be afraid day and night. Eo. Gimel, Pasuk, Esrim, Vachamesh. Psalms, Proverbs, Job. Because, Pachad, Pachadati. The fear that I feared. You know this verse. Mm-hmm. Come upon me. Vaasher. That which, Yagorti. So they're... Uh, I know that you are familiar with what is a ger, stranger. The root of it, uh, though, comes from also from fear. Because the stranger is he's outside and he looks different and he seems different. So there's this fear. Because the, the, dwe- the, the stranger is the one who's dwelling with you. But he's still strange. And there's still fear built into that. And that which, Yagorti, I feared, Yavoli has come to me. Mizmor Kafzayan, Pasukarishon, okay, Yahweh, or light, Yishi, my salvation, Mimi Ira, so this is the Yare fear, from whom shall I be afraid? Yahweh Maoz Chayai, he is strength of my life, Mimi Efchad, who should I be afraid? Okay, we'll look at one more, Yeshayahu, Yudbet, Shayim, Hine, 
Behold, El Yeshua Ti. God is my salvation. Eftach velo echad. I will trust and not be afraid. Ozi v'zimrat ya. What is Ozi? My strength. Uh huh. V'zimrat. What is a zemmer? Song. He is my strength and my song. Vayihi li Yeshua. My salvation. Okay. So there's actually a Hebrew song for the first part. All right. This verse. This verse appears three times in the Tanakh. Exodus 15, here, Isaiah, and? Psalm 118. Psalm 118. Okay, I guess it's really important. It's exactly the same in three places, okay? Echad. Eftach below Echad. I will trust and be not, uh, be not afraid. I will not be afraid. I'll put it down. Coming back to uh, chapter 3 in Hosea. Okay. Okay. So, but these people are afraid. They are going to finally fear... Yahweh, right? They've been out in the world. They haven't been doing any sacrifices or anything, but they're going to return. They're going to seek Yahweh. They're going to seek David. They will finally have some reverence for Yahweh. The El Tuvo, and to his goodness, Ba'acharitayamim. In the last days, they will come home. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. Ta da! Shimu! Listen. Listen to the word, B'nai Yisrael. Why? Key reeve. Do you remember the reeve? A contention? Strife? And who is the strife with? Im Yoshve Ha'aretz. With the dwellers of the land. The people who live in the land. It's not the earth. He doesn't worry about that. The earth is filled with pagans. He's not, you know, I mean, they're wrong for what they're doing. But these people are supposed to know better. And what do they not have? They have no emet, no chesed, no, no mercy, da'at Elohim, knowledge, of, knowledge the of the Lord. Okay, this is his contention. This is what his court case is. Y'all are just not following me. Uh, these are a lot of words we don't know. The first is the root, Allah. Breshit kafdalit. Why is it funny? Because it's the name of that other entity yes. that thinks that it's God and yeah. he's, he's just a curse. So here in the Hosea it's a verb but uh, we're more familiar with it as a noun. So Breshit Kafdalad Pasuk Arbaim Ve'echan. So it doesn't only mean to curse, curse, it also means an oath and in this case it is, it is an oath. What is, what is the story of Gen, uh, Genesis 24? <laughs> What's the story? Starts, it starts off, they make an oath, and actually it doesn't start off with this um, Allah, it starts with a nishba, with this kind of a swearing. Um, and here, uh, by the time we're in verse 41, the servant is recounting the story of what happened mm-hmm. between, he, <clears throat> between him and Abraham, about how he's coming for the wife. Okay, and, and so he gets to this part of telling the story. Ah, therefore mm-hmm. now, uh-huh. To nake, we've talked about naka, to be clean, clear. You'll be not guilty. Me alati, of this oath, of my oath, which we are making together. Ki tavo el mishpachti, if you come. Okay, it's not about Rebecca, this is about him. And, and they're talking, Abraham's talking to the servant. If you come to my family, ve'imlo yitnu lach. And they will not give you. Vahaita, you will be naki. You will be free, you will be clear, you will be innocent of this Allah as an oath. So you can understand, I mean, it's the same root as Elohim. It has to do with the Aleph. The Aleph is, is the strong one. The Aleph, but he's the ox, he's the strong one. And the Lamed is the ox goat. Is the one who's leading you, or Lamed, he's teaching you. So who you make this attachment to, I mean, the word El means to go somewhere. Not El like El Shaddai, but going to someplace El. is what is the attachment, the strong thing that you make an attachment with. So you can see that as being God or some God's name. I mean, Allah is related to Elohim, linguistically. That's also how it, uh, like an oath. Bamidbar, hey, pasuk esrim ve'echad. What is Numbers 5 about? The adultery, the test for adultery. Hishbia, this comes from the nishba, to swear. Okay, he's putting her under an oath, the Kohen and the woman. And it's an oath of cursing. It's an oath of the curse. 
And then he's going to tell her what the curse is, and, and you know it. And, and he will say, and the Kohen will say to the woman, this, this is kind of like what Yahweh is going to do to you. Yahweh will make you a curse. Yiten means not only to give. We've talked about this a little bit. It means to set in place, to put in place, to put in place you uh, as an Allah. You will be a curse. And, th and this oath, which is, which is with you, that he will. The betet is also ten, la tet, to give. Okay, it's the um, infinitive, the absolute infinitive. Your yerech, your thigh, nofelet, mm -hmm. which is given as rot, but it means to fall. And your beten, bitenech, your beten, your belly, tzava, is to swell up. Uh, the idea of the nofelet, I think actually it's used as a uh, a miscarriage. And so, as we said, everything is so nice in the Bible that they just try and speak this kind of clean language. But a nofelet is a, a miscarriage. It's spoken of in other places. I don't this is, now it's clearly a curse. It's not just an oath anymore. He puts her under an oath, and then he pronounces what is the curse. All right, one more, and Shoftim Yud Zion Pasuk Shtayim. This is Mika and his mother. Vayomer Laimo. His mother. his mother, he said to his mother, Ella for my kesef, silver, the, the thousand, one, eleven hundred silver, asher lukach lach. Okay, so you know the verb, lakach means to take, and the u tells you, u in the middle of the word there is frequently passive, which was taken from you. And you, this is the at, so you have a kativ kri here. Does everybody know how to figure out the kativ kri? Which one is written and which one? You okay. Have to that. Recognize it has no you have vowels. to recognize it. You have to look at the bottom because it has no vowels. So what's written there is, is not correct. It's got extra letters in it. So the one that you read is the one either it has the vowels or the one that's a footnote or whatever that looks like for your translation. Alit. So this is a little bit difficult to recognize. It's a verb that ends in hey. And what happens when verbs end in hey in the past tense? I, let's, uh, what's a uh, verb? Uh, Bana. Uh, okay, I, yeah. oh, how about roe? Because roe or bana. Raiti, baniti, they turn into yuds. Baninu, rainu, they turn into yuds. So this is a funny looking thing, but that's what's happened here. The hay of the root, Allah, has turned into a yud. And what is the tav for? You. You feminine singular. You cursed. Vagam amart. And you said baoznai. My ears. Hine ha kesef. Iti. Ani lakachtiv. I took it. Uh huh. Vatomer imo. Imo. M. His, his and mother. His mother said. She said. Not you said. Right? Because it. Uh, it's hard to tell who's speaking, but right? No, she said, she said his mother. It wasn't to his mother at all. She said his mother. Oh, Baruch, aren't you blessed? This is we're in Hosea 4:2. Alo. This is a uh, infinitive. This is an absolute infinitive. All the next five verbs are absolute infinitives. I think we don't know the next one either, which is kachesh, means to tell a lie. Like We're going here. to Breshit Yud Chet Pasuk Chamesh Esrei. So, who is the Chachash? Sarah. And she's saying, Lo Tzachakti. I didn't laugh. Why? Ki Yirei She feared. She was afraid. And he said, No, you did laugh. You did laugh. Okay? So this is, uh, it can be a denial, it can be a lie. Let's look at Vayikra, Perek He, Pasuk Esrim Vishtayim. O. O is or Matza. He is finding Aveda. So do you know the root for that? What is lost? Okay. It comes from, you remember, Avadon is the destroyer. So something that is completely, completely lost. Um, so if he finds something that's lost, and he lies about it, the ba is about it. Here's your nishba, and he swears to sheker. We have talked about sheker, haven't we? It's another word for lying. So he swears to, which a lie. And then this following phrase is sort of 
doesn't go so well grammatically, but it, it is um, in any one of these things that he is doing, the man, to sin, bahenna in them. Okay. That's any one of the things. So this is also, uh, this is a lie. He saw, he found the thing, but he's lying about it. Okay, and he swears also in a lie. All right, one more, Zachariah. Zachariah Yud Gimel, Pasuk Arba. Vahaya, Bayom Ahu. Yevshu. Do you remember this? We had this bush, la bush, in uh, the name of Ishboshet. It was last week or the week before? Shame. Shame. Okay, they will be ashamed. Who will be ashamed? The prophets. The prophets. Ish. Each man may chazono. <coughs> we talk about his chazon, his, his vision, and he navoto. So can you see the navi in the middle of there? His prophecies. Okay, they'll be embarrassed. Velo, yilbashu, lavash, to wear. Adarit, I think maybe we haven't had, huh? Adarit is a cloak. But Adar, when is Adar? When is the month of Adar? Right before Passover. It's an initial month of spring. And so the idea that the ground, the area becomes cloaked in like green. But it's certainly all the green things come up and it's like a green cloak mm -hmm. over. So that's part of the meaning of the month there. What kind of a cloak is he wearing? The hairy. the hairy cloak. We were talking about that. This is how they identify the prophet is by his clothes. Right, we were talking about John. Okay. And why would he not? He's not going to put this cloak on Lama'an Kachesh in order to lie or deceive. So then we see what was happening to the prophets, you know? They were profiting for profit, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and so at this point in time, in yeah, Bayom by Hahu, they're not going to do that anymore. Uh, let's go to Shemot Kaf. What's in Shemot Kaf? Okay, because the next three commands are from those commandments. Oh no, and then we have the numbering problem. As soon as you finish honoring your father and your mother, did you, can you see where that is? It might be 13, maybe you have 14 or 15. The two-word commandment, you might have a samach after it. Okay, the first one is lo tirzach. Okay, and that's your next verb here in Hosea. Ratzoach. What is, what's the, so the first one is lo tirzach, and that's what we see here. But here, I mean in Hosea, he's talking about the evil things that they are doing. Yeah. Okay, they're all in the infinitive. Gano, which yeah. is um, two down, right? In, in the Exodus 20, it's two down. It means to steal. Venaof is the one previous, which I hope you know because we're doing it and doing it. What is it? Adultery. Adultery. Okay, so all those things, those five verbs in Hosea 4.2, alo, the cursing, the chachesh, the swearing, the ratzoach, murdering, ganov, the stealing, naof, the adultery, all these things, partsu, which we have learned parats, right? Parats, breaking forth, and damim, bedamim, nagau. Naga, touch, touch, curse, plague, plague, not <laughs> Good. curse. But, but the literal meaning is to touch. It does mean eventually a plague because God can touch you this way and he can touch you that way. So what does this mean? Damim badamim naga'u. Bloods, bloods with bloods are they're touching. What does that mean? Constant one one bloody thing after another. Okay, the land is full of evil. And that's what this verse describes for two. All right, that's it. Come back next week.